Serving all of San Diego, this is your Fox 5 News. All right, listen to this statistic. Americans spent $27 billion, billion dollars with a B on dietary supplements last year. But do they work? And more importantly, are they actually safe? Well, a new consumer investigation actually found that 12 of them can actually cause more harm than good. This is coming from Consumer Reports. Dr. Kulari Chaudhry, founder of Wellspring Health, is here to talk more about the results of the study. And you, we were just talking about maybe you had a little, some issue with how this article was conducted. Tell me more about the study and what was found. Absolutely. So first of all, this is coming from a database, an institution that gets information on herbal supplements and not necessarily individual studies. And so some of these are theoretical risks. Hmm. Um, but the most important thing is that that as physicians, we take risks like this with our patients all the time. We prescribe medications that are also used in rat poison, but they're medications that we feel comfortable with the risk and we can make educated decisions to guide our patients. So what leads to an article such as this? Because people will see that people trust consumer reports, first of all. So the difference there, I mean, should I take that with the green salt? Do I consult a no, physician this is, or what you're, do I You're asking a great question and part of it is a real paradigm shift in mm -hmm. the way that natural supplements, the pharmacology of natural mm -hmm. supplements versus active medications. And I'll use aspirin as an example. Aspirin could easily be on that list really? because absolutely mm. risks of GI bleed, liver problem, kidney problems. But aspirin is something that you can come to your physician and say, oh, this is the dose that you should take. In these doses, it's too large. Um, for people who have this condition, they shouldn't be on aspirin. So they can come to their physicians and get an educated approach to making decisions. So it's because we know more about aspirin than obviously than a lot of these supplements, Exactly. Right? For example, some of the risks are purely theoretical. Mm -hmm. One in particular the country mallow they said it's likely potentially harmful because it has ephedrine in it now here's the thing there's very small amounts typically in the preparations of country mallow and so it's a purely theoretical risk but in the hands of a physician who understands this risk and understands the dosages that are appropriate this is something that could be of great help Okay, so country mallow was one of the ingredients, I guess, mm -hmm. one of the supplements. The other one is bitter orange. Bitter Folks orange. that aren't familiar with this, this may be new information to them. Absolutely. And so what it means is that there's something about, and this is how we should take this article, there is something about these herbs that requires the input of an expert, hopefully your physician. This is really our responsibility. And if people are spending billions, mm. it means our patients are taking something that we have no knowledge about. So we've got to become knowledgeable. But this is something that you should be able to come to a physician or somebody trained in this and say, what are the appropriate doses? What are the appropriate preparations? How would I take this? I think with the $27 billion industry, people are obviously trusting that these things look legitimate, they're going to do what they say, weight loss, heart health. So should we be a little more leery of when, when just taking something off the shelf? Because it's so prevalent, they're everywhere now. No, I agree. And I think this is where the onus really becomes more on mm. the physicians, is that if we know... Do most people, sorry for interrupting, no, do most right. people actually go to their physicians before taking supplements? No. Should they do that? No, and this is, this is really the big problem here, is yeah. that our patients are taking these things, they're coming to their physicians who are just saying, don't take them. Our patients are going, gosh, but... I found some benefit and so-and-so found tremendous benefit and so they're just not telling us and that's why it's even more important and there's courses out there Scripps Integrative Center here in San Diego offers a course we've got to become familiar so we become the trusted face of our visit of our patients and they come in and say listen I saw this consumer reports I'm gonna have patients coming into my office asking ask this, about all this and I'm gonna be able to sit down and have a conversation with them explaining what are the risks what are the benefits when is it safe when is it unsafe it's all about being informed and asking your doctor first, because quite frankly, exactly. if I was going to go take supplements, I wouldn't know one from the other. I would act, have to ask my doctor right. first. Right, and we should be able to have that conversation yeah. with you intelligently. Can we go through some of the other, some of the other supplements that we had on the list? Because sure. some of these, like I said, I mean, I don't even know. I haven't heard of most of these. I barely know how to pronounce them. <laughs> we have, is it aconite? Yes, and a lot of the concerns for, for these are that they get metabolized by the liver. And so taken in large doses, they can actually cause liver damage. Mm. But again, if you look at the side effects of the majority of the medications we prescribe as physicians, exact same problems. But what are we doing? We're checking your liver function mm. tests. We're monitoring the doses. 
And the, we should be doing the same and thing. And the kind of supplements, I mean, the, what kind of bottles are we seeing these in big name brands? Because I, I'm assuming Consumer Reports gets involved in something. That means that these are the big name brands that are out there with these supplements in it that no, you should... No, not necessarily. There's a lot of different companies that are providing these. And because they're completely unregulated, um, you know, a any company out there essentially could start offering. So no, they're not necessarily big name brands. And what was interesting is as we were, you know, some of the supplements that I don't work with at all, as mm -hmm. we were looking for them, it was actually hard to find because they're under the diet law section, not necessarily the supplement section for nutrition. As a doctor, are you surprised just how much this industry has taken off? Because No, because as a doctor, I'm seeing the frustration of my own patients mm. with just using regular medicine. And so this is really an anticipated change. But what's happened is our, our patients have already made the change. And as physicians, we've got our heels in the ground going, I, I refuse mm -hmm. to learn about yeah. this. I don't yeah. want to know that it exists. We, we don't have that option anymore. I always call my doctor, just, just to be on the safe side. <laughs> By the way, uh, to read more on the article that we're talking about and also more on these supplements, go to fox5sandiego.com. Dr. Chaudhry, as always, with Wellspring Health, we thank you for your time and your insight. Of course. Always very informative because I don't know half of this <laughs> stuff. Okay, Shali, over to you. All right. Thanks so much, guys.